Hello, welcome to the third lecture video of the Physics for Engineers course. Today, we will tackle kinematics and we will discuss the motion in one dimension. Studying kinematics enables us to describe motion. In this lecture video, we will focus on the simplest kind of motion, a body moving along a straight line or one-dimensional motion. This only means that we do not need sophisticated math, but mastery on vectors concept will be an advantage. Describing motion is when there is a change in position of an object with respect to time. In other words, you can say that an object is moving when its position changes. Say for instance, an apple falls from its tree to the ground or when there is a moving train from one station to another, or a flying airplane, or a man running, or and even the flight of a baseball when you hit the ball with a bat. All of these are motion and it can be described by studying kinematics. Now let's discuss the rectilinear motion, which deals with the motion of an object along a straight line. And this is the simplest kind of motion, the one-dimensional motion. In the next chapters, we will study on the component of a more complex motion, the two- or three-dimensional motion. There are four basic quantities of kinematics, and these are the displacement, velocity, time, and acceleration. When you say displacement, it is a vector quantity that refers to the change in position with direction. The word displacement implies that an object has moved or has been displaced. The scalar counterpart is the distance. Say, for example, this chicken. It moved from its initial position, x0, to its final position, xf. For the velocity, it talks about the rate at which the position changes. We can also say that it is the description and how fast and in what direction an object moves. Its scalar counterpart is the speed, while the acceleration means the rate at which the velocity changes during the time interval. For you to describe the motion of an object, you must first be able to describe its position, where it is at any particular time. The positions can be along the x-axis, y-axis, or z-axis. You should also define a starting point, and usually, we should choose at the origin where x is equal to 0. Take note that the position of x is relative to the origin. The direction has a positive sign if it's going to the right or east or up or north, while the direction has a negative sign if it's going to the left or west or down or south. Now, we draw the x-axis and y-axis. This is the x-axis. This x and this is y. This is the origin, and the right or up is positive, meaning this is positive x, and this is positive y. Okay, while this one, this is negative y, and this one is negative x. The SI unit is in meters. Let's take a look at these examples. The first example has a motion along the x-axis. Remember that all motion moving to the right is positive and negative if it's going to the left. Here, the green apple is located at the positive 2.5 meters because it, it is at the right of the origin. And this one, the blue particle, it is located at negative 3 meters. Now, what if your motion is along y-axis? 
So, this is a typical example with the motion along y-axis. And here, we have two options on where to set your ground. First, we can set your ground or origin here at the bottom of your tree. Or, we can set our origin wherein um, this is the initial position of your object or this is the first position of your apple. So, if you choose that your ground is here, all that is above your origin is positive and all that is below of your origin is negative. But, if, we, if you choose your ground to be here, meaning this part is positive, and this one is negative. Now, let's talk about the displacement. Displacement is a change of position over a time interval. Displacement can be denoted as delta x, where delta x means the change in x. So, delta x is equal to the x minus the x naught or x sub zero. Take note that no subscript stands for final and the subscript zero stands for initial. And the displacement is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction and it can be either positive or negative. The s a unit of displacement is in meter. Take a look at this first example. This is a particle that is moving from right to left, okay? So the initial position of the particle is positive 2.5 meters and the final position is at negative 2 meters. So if we want to know the displacement, delta x is given by the um, final position minus the initial position. So the final position is negative 2 meters minus the positive 2.5 meters. So the displacement is equal to negative 4.5 meters. Another example is when a particle is moving from left to right. So the initial position of this particle is at negative 3 meters and the final position is at 1 meter. So the displacement is 1 meter minus negative 3 meters. So this becomes positive. So the displacement is equal to 4 meters. Another example is this one. When a man runs from the initial position is at 1 meter, then the final position is at 7.2 meters. The displacement of this man is 7.2 meters. This is the final position minus the initial position that is 1 meter. So the displacement is 6.2 meters. Comparing the distance versus displacement, the distance is the total length of the path traveled. And it is a scalar quantity and it has a magnitude only. While the displacement is the shortest path traveled, and this is the straight line joining the starting point to the destination. And it is a vector quantity, meaning it has both magnitude and direction. Take a look at this figure. When you want to know the distance traveled by the student in going home from school, so, you should get the total distance by adding these distances. This is 0.5 kilometers plus 0.4 plus 1.2 plus 0.3 kilometers. And if you want to know the displacement, you should know that the straight line or you should get the straight line joining from the school to your home. So, this is 1 kilometer. The distance traveled by the students in by the student in going home from the school is 2.4 kilometers and the displacement is 1 kilometer directly 
from their home, the displacement. As for the speed and velocity, we define the average speed as the total distance over the time interval. Note that the speed is a scalar quantity, while the average velocity is given by the displacement over the time interval, and it is a vector quantity. In symbol, this is the change in x divided by the time interval. So this is the average velocity is equal to delta x over delta t. The SI unit is in meter per second. Defining the instantaneous speed or velocity, it is a velocity at a specific instant of time or specific point along the path. When you say instant in physics, it refers to a single value of time and it has no duration at all. The average velocity tells the velocity of the path traveled for the whole duration. This figure shows a, a speedometer or speed meter that measures and displays the instantaneous speed of a vehicle. Let's discuss about the average velocity. So this is a typical motion with constant velocity. And if we want to describe the motion through the position time graph, we can label this graph accordingly by getting the um, data points of this motion. Now, we set this at 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4, 5 seconds. So this is 10 meters, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so sorry for my handwriting. And if we label this one, this is the data point at 0 meters at 0 seconds. This is 1 second 10 meters, 2 seconds 20 meters, 3 seconds 30 meters, 4 seconds 40 meters, and 5 seconds 50 meters. Connect these data points. We can have a line that looks like this. Okay. Describing this position time graph, we need to recall our idea about slope. Slope as a symbol is m and it is denoted as rise over run or equal to delta y over delta x. So what we need to know is if we have an, an increasing, increasing slope, this is positive and if we have decreasing slope, this is negative slope. And if we have a small slope, small, small slope, this is slow. Sorry, can I have my pen? Slow. Here. This is slow. And if we have a large large slope this is fast and if we have a constant slope then it denotes as constant velocity so let's take this graph this one this is a typical graph that is slow because of the small slope so it has a small slope here i use the highlighter so this one it has a small slope so it is slow then it has an increasing um increasing direction so it has a positive direction and it also denotes a constant slope meaning it is constant velocity it has a constant velocity for this graph um as you can see this is more steep compared to this graph so it denotes that it has a large slope or it is fast and still it has an increasing um, slope. So it, has a uh, it goes to the positive direction and it has a constant velocity or constant slope. For the third graph, so 
this is a typical line that is decreasing. Okay, so meaning it goes to the negative direction and the slope here is small, so it is slow and still it has a constant slope, meaning it has a constant velocity. For the fourth graph, so this is a steeper or more steep line. So it has a large slope, meaning it is fast and it has a decreasing um it it has a decreasing slope meaning um it goes to the negative direction and still it has a constant velocity the rules in determining the sign for velocity is um this one if your motion is from this point to this point meaning you are moving to the positive direction the sign of your velocity is positive but if you came from this position to this meaning you are moving towards the negative direction the sign of your velocity is negative now let's discuss about acceleration again acceleration is the rate at which the velocity changes during the time interval in symbol, the average acceleration is given by the final velocity minus initial velocity over the time interval, or this is the change in velocity over the change in time. And there are three situations in which an object is accelerating, and we need to consider the velocity. Remember, the velocity is a vector quantity, meaning it has both magnitude and direction. For Situation 1, when the magnitude of your velocity is changing but the direction is constant, um, your object is still accelerating. For situation 2, when, when the magnitude of your velocity is constant but it changes the direction, it still has acceleration. And for the situation 3, if both magnitude and direction of your velocity is changing, then it has acceleration as well. So the SI unit of acceleration is in meter per second squared. The rules in determining the sign for acceleration is that we need to remember that acceleration is a vector quantity. It has a direction associated with it. The direction of the acceleration vector depends on two things, whether the object is speeding up or slowing down or if the object is moving to the positive or negative direction. So take a look at this example. For the first figure, so for the first figure, the initial velocity is positive and the final velocity is more positive, meaning the motion speeds up and the sign of acceleration is positive. And the next example is that the initial velocity is positive and the final velocity is less positive, meaning the motion of the object slows down. And the sign of acceleration is negative. But still, this object goes to the positive direction. So when the motion slows down, then the sign of acceleration is negative. As for this example, these two objects move in the negative direction. So, the final velocity is more negative and the initial is negative. So, this motion is considered that it speeds up, okay? And the sign of acceleration is negative. While for this example, the final velocity is less negative and the initial is negative, but, it's, but it goes to the negative direction, the motion of object slows down. So, the sign of acceleration is positive. Now, let's tackle the motion with constant acceleration. What do you mean by this? So, it is an accelerating object that changes its velocity by the same amount each second. And an object with a constant acceleration should not be confused with an object with a constant velocity. Because an object with a constant velocity is not accelerating. Now, the motion of a body undergoing a constant acceleration is defined by these equations. 
equation 1. Um, this is given by this. This is the final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration in x and time. Equation 2, this is the displacement. This is the final position, initial position, initial velocity, time, acceleration in x, and time squared. Equation in 3, equation 3, still this is the final position, initial position, initial velocity, final velocity. Equation 4, this is the squared of the um, change of velocity. Final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration in x, and the displacement. Remember that these four kinematic equations, that for a uniform or constant acceleration, the instantaneous accelerations are equal to the average acceleration. What if your motion is along y direction? The four kinematic equation still holds, but you have to replace all x variables into y. Also, you have to take note that the acceleration in y is equivalent to g. And this is negative 9.8 meter per second squared. This is called the acceleration due to gravity. So here, the ay is equivalent to g. And g here is negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, remember that the acceleration is a vector quantity. The magnitude of g is 9.8 meter per second. And since the gravity is pulling downward, so we have the negative sign. Okay, that is the reason of this negative sign here. But if you take the positive direction to be upward and all the motion that is downward is said to be negative, okay? And this is equal to negative G. Recall and remember and please be careful with the sign of G or you'll have trouble with free fall problems. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoy today's lesson. And for the next lecture video, we will solve various problems about one-dimensional motion. That's all. Bye-bye.